start by reviewing it a little bit differently and making it clearer. Do you need a packet? And making it clearer. If you're finding asymptotes, first things first, you have to factor. Okay, vertical asymptotes, write yourself a note. They come from the zeros of the denominator. So, those would be x equals what and what? Plus or minus 2. Good. Your horizontal asymptotes come from your degree rules, which you pretty much have to memorize. This particular one is small over big. So the horizontal asymptote is where? Y equals zero. Big over small doesn't exist. Same over same, you use the coefficients. X-intercepts. Set Y equal to zero, which essentially is gonna really come from the zeros of the numerator. Because the only way this function is going to equal zero is if the numerator equals zero, which is that x equals one. In your y-intercept, you set x equals to zero, and you literally do that. So in this particular case, that would be zero minus one over zero plus two times zero minus two. So that's going to be a negative one over a negative four. So your y-intercept is at one-fourth. So we'll get the basic structure in there. I'm not, I'm not going to scale it, which means just assume it's ones all, all around. Your vertical asymptotes were at plus or minus two. Your horizontal asymptote is at zero, which again, we can cross, but as we go towards infinity, it's going to get closer to that, either coming from the bottom or from the top. Your x-intercept is one, and your y-intercept was one-fourth. So then the last thing in this set of instructions that we haven't done, it says graph each of the following using all those features and a sign chart. So this is what I was talking about earlier where I did too much with the numbers and I, I actually figured out the value, although all I really cared about was whether it was positive or negative. So if I plugged in something like negative one, I want to kind of explore what's going to happen with that. So if I were to use a sign chart plugging in negative one to find out if this maybe turns back around or continues going up, right? I obviously have to connect these two points. Is it gonna continue going up or is it gonna turn back around? Because we're dealing with crossing the x-axis again though, we only had one x-intercept, which means this is actually definitely not turning back around. Can we all agree with that? Because if it turned back around when I connected these two points and crossed the x-axis again, that would have been an additional x-intercept. So logically there, you already know, okay, it's probably not, but if you just want to do a sign chart just for the sake of practicing, if I plug in a negative one, my numerator is going to be negative. If I plug in a negative one on the bottom, I'm going to have a positive times a negative. So overall, it's going to be a negative over a negative, which is a positive. So that further confirms that at negative one, it stays positive. And any time you're approaching a vertical asymptote, you're either going to shoot up towards infinity or shoot down towards negative infinity because you cannot cross those. So that just tells us that we're going towards infinity. Now, this technically could bounce off the x-axis, right? It could turn around right there and go back up towards infinity 
or it might go through. And either way, we would only have one x-intercept. So as far as a sign chart, maybe we would just plug in one and a half. And again, all you care about is your sign. You do not care about the value, so don't let like one and a half scare you. If I plugged in one and a half, would the numerator be positive or negative? Right, one and a half minus one over one and a half plus two would be a positive. One and a half minus two would be a negative. So a positive over a negative would be a negative. So I know it's continuing down, which gives, gives it that shape right there. Now, there's a couple ways to figure out what happens on the other side of the asymptote. Again, a sign chart because when we're coming from the other side of the asymptote, again, it's either going to go in towards infinity or going towards negative infinity. So one, two, if you plugged in a three, what would your numerator be? Positive or negative? Positive over a positive times a positive, so all of that is positive. So that gives us insight that it is going towards positive infinity on this side. And then, as is true with horizontal asymptotes, that's what guides your end behavior. And this is really the end of my graph because I don't have any other vertical asymptotes that I'm going to run into. So this is just going to come down and get closer and closer to the x-axis. Um, here's the other thing, and I said it when I was doing that example on the board. Vertical asymptotes, most of the time, are going to have opposing behavior on either side. So if you're approaching that, ap that asymptote from the left, it's going towards negative infinity. And if you're approaching it from the right, it's going towards positive infinity. Does everyone see what I mean by that? Once in a blue moon, you will have an asymptote where it goes towards the same infinity on both sides. That's only going to happen if your asymptote has a degree that's even. So, for example, if one of these asymptotes, like if the x plus 2 asymptote, so this, this one, had a little squared on it, and that asymptote, kind of like a bounce, would with a degree of 2 on a root, a degree of 2 on an asymptote would imply same behavior on either side. Okay? But our example, because this is to the first power, we can assume if that goes towards positive infinity, this one's coming towards negative infinity. And just those little tricks help you like speed things up. So you really don't have to do that many sign charts. So if I were to just type this in, you will not have a calculator for some of this chapter, FYI. I just threw it in there like it was nothing. Well, it, I mean, if it's graph it and like, like I, you saw on the spiral, remember I, I put that question on the spiral and you pretty much just graphed on your calculator and looked at all the features and got it all right. Kind of defeats the purpose of learning these concepts. So anyway. <laughs> True. But they're gonna, you're gonna, there's, there's not gonna be calculators for things that you need to do, and you're gonna have to under, understand it enough to write your own algorithm to pro, to program the calculator. Yeah. There we are. There it is. So can I just show you one quick second? I, I typed in that one just so you can see it obviously worked out. If I were to go back in and just make this x plus two asymptote squared. I don't remember, I think I'm supposed to do it here. Insert a squared, yes. If I make that x plus two asymptote squared, so the asymptote that's at negative two now has a degree of two, you'll see how it changes my shape. Do you see how surrounding the negative two asymptote, they both now are going in the same direction? Still though, the horizontal is guiding the end behavior. Okie doke. Any questions? Okay.
I didn't see that there or look at it, but it's pretty much saying the same thing I did. Vertical asymptote, denominator equals zero, okay? Horizontal asymptote is spelled out a little bit differently up in here. It says, like, it's it really just guides your end behavior as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, so plus or minus infinity. So as your x is going in either one of those directions, the horizontal asymptote is just really used for end behavior. Clearly, we can cross it. So this further illustrates that point, which is a new idea because you're so used to not crossing vertical ones. And then x intercepts when the numerator equals zero and y intercepts when x equals zero. We got all that. Okay? Now, this one factors on both the numerator and the denominator. So you start by taking out a 3x and you're left with x minus 1. And the denominator, so this is definitely going to own um, x plus 4, x minus 3. Alyssa, where are the vertical asymptotes? Good. Horizontal asymptote. It is possible to have two, but you guys won't ever have two, I don't think. Faith? Yep. Yep. Three. Yep. Y equals three. So this is the same over same. So you just use your coefficients three over one. Your x intercept. Maggie. That's one of them. There's another one, though. Nope. Your x-intercepts come from where? Your numerator. So the zero, if you were to tee up your numerator, you'd get x equals 1, and you'd get x equals 0. So that's going to be interesting because those x-intercepts are pretty close to each other, so we're going to have to figure out what's happening between them. And your y-intercept, Mike, you might need a minute to figure it out. I need a minute. Are you looking at the picture of the graph? You're not going to have your calculator. So you have to know to find the y-intercept that you set in an x of 0. Wait, why can't we? Okay. Oh, I'm not re-explaining that. So if I plug in a 0, Mike, y-intercept set x equals 0, what's your numerator going to be? No, if x equals 0, what's 3 times 0 squared minus 3 times 0? zero over what's your denominator going to be? So zero over negative 12 is zero. Okay. Oh, please. It's for, the it's, for it's for the challenge. It's like, because I can. <laughs> so the only way to test your knowledge of the concepts is either to take the calculator away, or I could do what the Common Core does, and I could treat these things and like have them turn into like X minus A, and then your x-axis would have to be variables. Then it gets very confusing. Okay, on this stuff right now. Yeah. How it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. Sure. 
I know you won't. You won't have to do like any of this in your real life. That's that was my question about the school system being broken, you guys. That's a whole conversation. True. True. I the taxing is so convoluted that I could only teach you so much. If I get confused and I'm really like because you were never taught it. I would love to. Maybe I'll do that. Right, but CPAs go to school for three years and just focus on the tax laws, and then after three years, they fully understand it. So we would, we would have to start like with basics, which I could do with you. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Do that over this, and I'll be happy. Okay. All right. So. I gotta get my horizontal asymptote in there at y equals three. X-intercepts, we have two of them at one and zero. So like I said, those are very close together, so it's gonna be very interesting what happens in between those. Um, and a y-intercept of zero is kind of already covered. So, now we move to sign charts. I first and foremost wanna know what's happening at like a half. So if I were to plug in a half, my numerator would be a positive times a positive. negative. I, I need to have, see what's going on in between these two zeros. So I just picked. Right. And then a half plus four is positive. A half minus three is negative. So that all ends up being a negative over a negative, which is a positive. So that tells me that in between, at like a half, there's a little dip into the positives. Well, how do we know how big the dip's going to be? It, that doesn't matter. I don't care. The only way to know that is to actually come up with the values. Like actually, and we don't have to do that. So then, because, so here we go. Save yourself a lot of time. Because there are only those two x-intercepts and no more, this is headed downward. It's not going to turn around again. Right, so this is definitely gonna go towards negative infinity. And the same is true on the other side. Yeah, they all are like that. In Well, no, they're not, I guess, because that's not a parabola, it kind of was a squiggle. And then what's the degree of this asymptote? I'm just avoiding sign charts. The degree of this asymptote, which is the x plus minus three one, what's the degree of that? One. So if this side goes towards negative infinity, this is gonna go towards positive infinity and it's gonna kinda be cornered up there with that horizontal asymptote guiding end behavior. Yeah, yep. Yeah. On a vertical asymptote, if you look back at the factors, the, the three asymptote came from this factor. If that has a degree of one or three or five or an odd degree, just like when a root has an odd degree, it kind of goes through the root, this asymptote will have opposite behavior on either side. So if on the one side coming from the left it goes negative, then on the other side it'll go positive. If the degree of your asymptote is even, it'll have the same behavior on both sides, almost like a bounce. So it would go towards negative infinity and it would also start going from negative infinity. So really that's the difference between the graph we have here and just throwing a little squared on there, which would move this back, would really bounce this back down. If you don't like that, you can just do a sign chart. If you plugged in a four, you're gonna get a very positive number. And so like that's above three which would matter. You'd have to pay attention to the magnitude of that because if you get something that's positive but below three, it would maybe be down here again. So you'd have to compare that to three. But I don't like doing sign charts for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, this one also has a degree of one. So if this is going towards negative infinity, this goes towards positive infinity. And there's your graph. Did it wrong? Is it? 
why? How I'm just getting that so quickly? Yeah, if you just wanted, Allie, if you make this part better, if you just wanted to plug in a 4, you could do 12 times 3 over 8 times 1. 36 divided by 8 is above 3, so you'd know that that would put in a point above 3. Anytime you're in the... So when I add asymptotes, the other thing to realize is I kind of create... They're not quadrants anymore because there's more than four of them, but I created like six different window sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? When you're on the outside of your two vertical asymptotes, your graph is going to be sort of cornered between the asymptotes, just like it would be between an x and y axis in the parent graph, because the parent graph looks like that. So when, you're, when you have vertical asymptotes on the outer sides of those, it gets cornered between the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote. So you know that like once I get out on this side, it's either cornered up there or cornered down here. Does that make sense? Um, you just have to really figure out which one, which I tend to just go based on the degree of the asymptote. If you want to do a sign chart to find out if it's up here or down here, once you do one number out there, you pretty much know which corner to put it in. In between vertical asymptotes, there's a little bit more variability. Obviously, this one kind of came down, whereas this one was like a parabola. All right.